Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. Today we're just going to do a really quick one and it's about troubleshooting inside DaVinci Resolve. Sorry if there's a little bit of an echo just moved into a new office and it's not completely soundproof yet. But yeah, troubleshooting, troubleshooting rather in DaVinci Resolve 16. So I get a lot of comments with a lot of issues that people have inside fusion and editing and all this sort of stuff that are literally just a quick button presses away, but it's kind of hard to explain in the comments. So I thought I'd just show you in this video some common issues you might come into when editing in Fusion or in DaVinci Resolve and sort of how to get around them so that you don't sort of freak out and think that everything's broken. So let's just jump in and take a look. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve, the first thing we wanna turn on is live save. So I do see a lot of comments about how they wish DaVinci Resolve would just auto save as they're editing so they don't have to worry about it. And it does have this feature, it's just not turned on by default, which makes no sense. Super easy to turn on there, you just go DaVinci Resolve, Preferences, and uh, wherever the preference is on Windows, think File, and then you wanna to go to, it probably will open up here, System by default, go to User, Project Save and Load, and here it is here, Live Save. You just wanna turn that on, and then you can also turn on Project Backups if that's what you want as well. Keep in mind, having Live Save on is going to give you a slight performance hit, not a whole lot, but a little bit, obviously, because after every single button click, so every time you change a setting, uh, it will automatically save a version of that project and cache it so that it will always be there so that if it crashes, because we all know if you, DaVinci Resolve likes to crash every now and then, then you can access it. So with Live Save turned on, I wanna show you another really common one that is gonna probably cause you to run into a few issues whilst editing, and it is something that helps you speed up DaVinci Resolve but can also sort of throw you so let's have a look at that. So one of the things that helps speed up DaVinci Resolve is the ability to turn off effects. So here we have this first clip here with a quick color grade on just to give you an example. And then we've got this one here. Now, if you have a really large project, color grading may start to bog down your machine. And luckily in the viewer on every single pane, so in the color viewer, Fairlight everywhere, you have this little viewer, this button here and it's bypass color grades and fusion effects. So if you turn that off, basically all it's doing is playing the base clip with no effects applied. So it runs a lot smoother and you can turn this on and off at any point in any pane so that you can speed the computer up if necessary. The downside to that is if you've done like a fusion motion graphic or an effect and you wanna view it, well, if you have this turned off, here we have a fusion title it's just a blank screen. It's always gonna be black. And I know a lot of people will bring their, you know, they'll build their title and I'll drag it into their project and they'll think everything is broken. So like, oh, I can't see anything. It's a black screen. But if you just turn that on, all of a sudden you can see that there. So that's a really quick tip. So don't freak out if your fusion motion graphic or whatever it is, maybe you downloaded one, maybe you purchased one of my ones, link in the description, shameless plug, and you just can't see anything. First thing to check is make sure you've got that turned on because that is going to save you a hell of a lot of time and I've definitely seen this in the comments a fair bit. So there you go. Now, another thing to talk about is if you wanna quickly speed things up, maybe you wanna leave all your effects on but you still want a quick sort of workflow is just go to your playback settings and here under proxy mode, we can change it to half and quarter resolution. That just changes what resolution this uh, viewer is displayed at and we can see that if I change it from off, which so it's running at full resolution to quarter, you can see right in here, you can see that there is a very clear quality loss. And we do it again, proxy mode. You can see a very clear quality loss there. But that's a quick, quick tip as well. If you want to say speed it up, but also have your fusion effects visible, then that's gonna speed it up. All right, and the last little troubleshooting thing is to do with fusion specifically because this is probably the most common comment I get and it is they're following one of my tutorials or someone else's tutorials and like, hey, I followed it along and for some reason I can't see it in the viewer or it's not working. Not working tends to be the most common response. So let's take a look at how that might be fixed. So here we have a really boring fusion composition and we, are, we have our testing display. Thing is, if we were to have a look at the media out node, there's actually a background and two texts. Now, what might be happening is if you are doing a fusion composition, sometimes you want to work on individual sections of that composition. And you can do that by clicking and dragging them into the workspace. 
And then that allows you to really focus on, you know, what you're working on. You can change the color and you can see that here and you can move it around. Thing is, is if you are only displaying this node in the viewer, it will not display anything else that came before it. But if you wanted to see everything that came before it, just click and drag the merge, then you'll see everything else. But if I drag merge one, it won't show what came after it. So I, that might seem complicated, but just really keep in mind whilst working in a fusion composition, what is being displayed in the viewer. And you can see this by these little dots here, all right? Default, if you're doing a one viewer sort of pane fusion composition here, it's gonna be viewer two. So it's gonna be that second little white dot there. And you can hotkey that by hitting the two on your keyboard. So if I select merge two, hit two, it'll display it here, merge one. If you have a two pane, well then that's where that left white dot. So they represent the two viewers there. But I quite often just work with the one single pane here and then sort of just shift between what I need to be displayed but just keep in mind that if you've built like a full fusion composition and you do wanna see it in the viewer, make sure you are displaying the correct node in that viewer. The easiest way to just do that is to grab the media out and drag that into the viewer. So we can just do that here, grab the media out, drag and drop. And that is gonna be the easiest way to see everything. And hopefully that is going to fix a lot of the issues that maybe a few of you are having. This is just a quick video to sort of troubleshoot a few of those sort of like quirks and comments that I've been getting and hopefully this does help at least a little bit and yeah if it did help make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and I try to answer the comments as best I can I think this should solve a lot of your issues so yeah and hopefully we fix this echo in this new office but yeah until the next video guys see ya